Welcome, everybody, to the Every Pokemon Episode Podcast, your weekly review of every Pokemon episode ever. I am one of your hosts, the luxurious wrestling Chris G. You might know me from Sports Entertainment Breakdown. And on the other line with me today, he is the Jesse to my James. It is good old Dougie Fresh. Dougie man, how you doing? I, I don't know how I feel about being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's the one in power, though. I mean, I guess it's fair. You're doing. Yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, welcome, everybody, to the every Pokemon episode ever podcast. And we might get this name. You might hear three different variations of this name, but that's basically what this podcast is. But yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, that's one of the things that we kind of, you know, it's like with anything new you start up, it's like one of the first things you think of is what's the name? And like we went back and forth a little bit through tech, just you and I, and like I was like, you know, I I had a couple and I don't want to I don't want to waste them here just in case we decide to switch things up, you know. And you know, <laughs> you had a couple and it was like, well, why don't we just call it the every episode ever it's like because you tune on to a lot of podcasts right and they and they have flashy names right and you go oh i want to listen to this it sounds cool and then it's just okay so we kind of decided and i kind of rationalized it in my head canon <laughs> that rather than rack our brains and give ourselves migraines for a week trying to think of this cool really insidery flashy name we're just going to give you what we are right on the box. And yeah. The thing you come for is the content in the box. So we're advertising that we're going to review every Pokemon episode ever, starting with episode one. And they're still going to this day, bro. So we'll never like, be done. We'll never, no. We'll never be done. <laughs> Job security. <laughs> <laughs> As long as Pokemon's around, we still got a job. And you get one new episode every single week. So, I mean, that's that's different. That, it's going to be hard some weeks because some weeks, I remember when me and you were kids, we used to watch it on, what was it, the Kids WB? Yeah. And sometimes Kids WB would be on some shit and they, they'd be like, okay, we're going to give you three new episodes, but – the only way you're going to be able to watch these three episodes is if you get up at seven o'clock and then we're going to play another new episode at nine o'clock. And then you might get another episode around 11 o'clock and we're going to jam pack this in. But you have to watch these other shows in between the Pokemon. Yeah, right. They <laughs> broke them up. They didn't say, OK, here's Pokemon from nine from seven to nine thirty. They said, no, we're going to do this. And then here's an episode of Freakazoid. And then, you know, here's Pokemon. And then here's, you know. Static shock, static shock, or the Animaniacs, or whatever. No, it was, you know, and you know, there was no DVR, obviously, no. so you couldn't set. Okay, I just want to record new Pokemon episodes. Dude, I could not tell you when I had no idea that a new episode was coming on at seven o'clock, and I'm tuning in at nine, and I'm already an episode behind because I didn't wake up at seven o'clock to watch the first episode. Like they, they had really bad like advertisements when it came to new episodes for this pokemon at least at least that's what i remember because i used to be on top of that because i i would i was one to watch power rangers every week yeah <laughs> but i don't know how it was with you but do you remember ever like oversleeping and missing an episode and having to wait for it to come back on later on that week well i don't my earliest memory of watching pokemon is this and i could be wrong and i I didn't really do too much of the background, and I mean, that's something I can do for later installments just to kind of get my facts straight. I remember watching episodes before school, so I'm talking like 6, 6.30, 7, you know, before the bus would come. Yeah, I remember that too, right so before I'm, Sailor Moon. So, I mean, that's just getting up and just sitting in front of the TV and, you know, eating <clears throat> eating my toast or whatever, my, my bagel bite, whatever the fuck I was having for breakfast. <laughs> Cereal for me, Fruit Loops. And I was just watching Pokemon. Like, I didn't, I don't know if I made a conscious effort to, like, okay, this is something I want to follow. Probably for quite some time. I mean, I'll probably get to get around that episode 
that something clicked for me, I'll probably go on like a half hour like <laughs> rant, of... rant of like this is the episode that clicked and like but it was just something that was on because you know, <clears throat> like Nick Jr. You know, wasn't really like wasn't really too much of a thing that early in the morning. No. And I remember I, I remember Face from Nick Jr. Do you did were you watching it that early when Face was still a thing? Yeah, but he wasn't kicking in at six o'clock. No, hell no. They 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 did regular Nickelodeon and then around like the eight o'clock mark was when Nick Jr. would kick on. Right. <laughs> So, like, with me, it was, like, because, obviously, I was a kid, so I had, you know, a bedtime. So, like, if, so, like, say if the Bulls were on the West Coast, like, I couldn't stay up to watch. The, so, I would, so what I would do is I would wake up, I would turn on SportsCenter, because that was when SportsCenter was still a thing. <laughs> I would get the Bulls highlights pretty early, because the Bulls were, you know, the shit. And, you know, if you haven't been watching The Last Dance, you know, fucking catch up. I mean, it's over. Um Good shit. So I would catch, you know, the Bulls highlights. I would see that they won because they usually won. And then I would flip over and it would be, well, I'm going to just, it was whatever. And, you know, I turned down an episode of, I, it probably wasn't the first episode. I don't remember when I was conscious of, oh, there's an actual order to this shit. But it was just, this is cool. And I want to fight with these creatures. Yeah, and my introduction to Pokemon. So, okay. Um episode 1 might be a little bit longer than what um any of our other episodes are, but this is just highlighting what Pokemon was for us before we get into the niche of this, which is what you want to hear. You want to hear about these episodes and what we think of them. Right. So, my my introduction to Pokemon, I was let me see, when did Pokemon Red version come out i'm doing uh i'm doing a quick google search right okay it came out here oh it came out the week of the very first episode um september 28th and oh no 20 days after yeah 20 days after so i actually did not catch the very first episode right away my parents bought me um the big hulky gray game boy for christmas and I got the Pokemon game as one of my games. It was the red version. And I had no idea what this game was. And I would just play it. And my parents were told at the game store, oh, this is what all the kids are playing right now. Your your kid might like this. So I started playing it. And I was like, oh, I really like this. And then I found out that it was a TV show. And I probably got into it. Maybe a couple months after the initial start, but I I started watching it, and I, luckily I think Kids WB must have been playing the episodes back from the beginning or doing a rerun. But I started watching it, and I I they had me hooked ever since, ever since. Yeah. So. But yeah, the um the episode that we're going to be reviewing today, of course, is the infamous episode Pokemon I Choose You, which originally aired in Japan on April 1st, 1997, but aired out here in the U.S. of A, September 8th, 1998, which is over a year after it had initially released in Japan. That is nuts to think about these days. Well, yeah, these days, of course, but like you know, put yourself in 1998 headspace, you know, it's like, why would us Westerners, you know, give a hoot about Japanese anime? Yeah. This obscure (laughs) Japanese cartoon, you know, uh, fighting monsters, you know, cut. Yeah. However many series there are right now. So, I mean, I mean, you had knockoffs like, um, I, 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 and I, I like Digimon. I, 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 well, I liked it. Um, but people would say, oh, that's a knockoff of Pokemon and all this. To be completely honest, Digimon came out around the same time that Pocket Monsters, um, which is the name of Pokemon in Japan, came out in Japan. It just, us out here in the U.S. didn't get Digimon until years after it was already originally released and dubbed over. 
Right, and by that time, everybody and their mama had pokey fever, and it was it was over. You know, I mean, so anything. Or, our, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I said, or our parents calling it Pokemon. Pokey, Pokemon. Like, or, or if they were really out of it, they added an S. It was Pokemon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but I mean, we're like I said, we're still finding our niche with this podcast. But what we want to start doing is uh, this day in history when it comes down to the episodes, at least in the U.S. Um, on the U.S. version. So we're gonna dip back into. September 8, 1998, and I'll go ahead and start it by giving this is um, the birthday of one good old David Arquette, which is <laughs> infamous in the wrestling industry, which we cover on a weekly basis as well on Sports Entertainment Breakdown when he won the WCW title. Yeah, but, you know, and obviously it would have been real nice if this was the day he won the belt. But this was just his birthday, and this was just an excuse to tie it back into wrestling for a second. Obviously, David Arquette, you know, actor known throughout the world, you know, the Scream franchise. Um, he was married to Courtney Cox, Eight-Legged Freaks. You know, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and list off David Arquette's IMDb page, for goodness sake. <laughs> no, we don't have that much time. No. <laughs> but um but yeah, you have a second piece that you were going to put for good old September 8, 1998? Yeah, this was um this was just a sheer stroke of luck honestly cuz you know, uh, Re uh wrestling Chris he was like, you know, why don't we do a history segment so you know, you punch in the date on Google. And as luck would have it in terms of how we're concerned, this uh, September 8, 1998 is the day uh, Mark McGuire hit home run, hit, uh, his, his 62nd home run of the season, uh, breaking Roger Maris's record. Uh, he hit it off Steve Traxel. I remember watching this game. Um, it was a big fucking deal. It was a cheap-ass home run. Um, <laughs> it, it was right down the line. It barely made it out. Um I remember him shaking all the Cubs players' hands as he went around the bases. He almost missed first base. Um, all his teammates came out at home play. It was like, it was the middle of the game. Like it, you know, it wasn't like a walk off or anything. Um, you know, Sammy Sosa comes sprinting in from right field. Like you know, like obviously you know you know I'm I hate the Cardinals. You know, but it was you know, this is one of those moments where you know and. <laughs> Back in 1990, everybody was watching baseball. Like, and I mean, obviously, we're in the we're in the time we're in now, where professional sports are like jockeying for like, okay, how are we going to come back? You know, what what boxes do we have to check off to come back? You know, and like, I just heard today that the NHL, if they come back, they're just going to come back and they're going to be right into the playoffs, and they've got this 24 team structure. The NBA's kicking around whether they need to come back in the regular season or if they just need to start playoffs and the nfl they're sitting back they're going well we're we're starting in september we might be all right and they might be but they might not be with fans and it's just to sit there in 98 and you're like okay mcguire hit a home run today sosa hit two you know tomorrow and then you know was, and each one of their at bats was like must see especially when they got close you know espn would break in to whatever they were covering and they're like we're gonna go live to st louis for a mark mcguire at bat and you know he'd strike out and then they'd just go back to whatever but then on the off chance he hit a home run you go well you saw that one and yeah i remember this game was on national television um you know the cubs and the cardinals were jockeying all season um but yeah, uh, cheap home run. I'll, I'll always remember. <laughs> it went right down the line. Like if it would have been like two feet lower, it would have hit off the wall and been a probably a single because he McGuire wasn't busting out the box. But it got out and. I'm glad you have a lot more memory because I definitely was one of the people that was not watching baseball. Baseball was not in my household. Uh, when I was real, real little. I mean, even though I have family that played baseball, we didn't really watch it. We were more of a basketball family. 
So, but yeah, um, you ready to start diving into episode one of Pokemon called Pokemon I Choose You? And then that's the way it's kind of translated in both English and Japanese. Um, I can try to say it in Japanese. It's Pokemon Kimi ni Kimeta. I hope I said that right. Or at least close. Yeah, but in English, it means Pokemon I Choose You. As we go down the list of episodes, um, I will be giving the tra- Japanese translation of the Pokemon episode name as well. So um, you'll see a big difference for episode two uh, once we once we get to it. But yeah, we we start this episode off and this is always stuck with me, Doug, because you start the very first episode the way that you start um a nintendo game boy game in back 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 in the day when you would turn on your game boy and put on pokemon red or blue it was gengar and nita reno getting ready to bite or getting ready to fight in the pokemon league yeah and like i mean I, you even had the music i think was even the same um but yeah, that was one of my first notes. Like right off jump, like the first Pokemon. Po- listen to me, I'm fucking. <laughs> what the fuck, I'm thirty. You know what the fuck? You know the first Pokemon you see, you know you don't see a a Charmeleon or a Charmeleon. Why would you? See, and it, you don't see a Char- Charmander or a, a, a Pikachu or a. You know it's it's like you know Gengar and Nidorino. It's like pretty obscure. So, like, unless you were hip to the game, you're going, all right. But, yeah, like you said, like, you called it out right away. So, and you had probably been playing the game. So, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, and and I I, I thought it was cool. I mean, and then they started off Game Boy style, and then it kind of zooms you in. And the Pokemon are battling inside of the Pokemon League. And you see Gengar, you see Onyx, you see Nidorino. These trainers are fighting, and all of a sudden you kind of just pan out. And Ash, ten-year-old uh, Ash, is watching it on his little TV, getting ready for the morning because it's nighttime inside of his house. And just the nostalgia of his room. And I, I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I'm, I'm looking at just some screen caps of the beginning of this episode and he has like a snorlax um bing bag chair that's on the floor he has a pokemon um uh, what what is a pokeball that he he throws that's a clock that has a pidgey in it excuse me sir that's a that's a that's a voltorb you were put or a voltorb name yes a voltorb but he also has a clefairy like doll and well, then he and, has a... and don't disrespect the poly world pencil sharpener now either <laughs> but um the one thing i want to focus on is he they zoom in and he has a poster of the first three starter pokemon that you would get in pokemon red and blue which is squirtle bulbasaur and charmander yes just right there on the wall and he's getting ready and but it as he's getting ready, he's putting his hat to the back and he's like, you know what? I can't wait until I'm a Pokemon master. And then he grabs his Voltorb and he throws it. And then his mom catches it and goes, it's 11 o'clock. It's time for bed. <laughs> but this motherfucker sitting here fully dressed. Yeah, he is <laughs> like fully, fully dressed. He has a jacket on. He put his gloves on. But uh, but I mean, we we also have to remember this boy is ten years old. Yeah. Like he's about to get a fucking Pokemon license at ten. That is nuts. When I when I rewatched this, I was like, "Damn, Ash was young." Yeah, that hit me the other day because I mean, I, I'm sure I registered it when I was watching it, even as I was probably not much older than he was at that point, and I might have even been younger when I started. You know, whatever. The, you know, I'm I'm no good at math. Um, <laughs> but it even struck me then that like, damn, 10 is, you know, shit, you know, and like now sitting here as, as a 30 year old man, I'm going, fucker was 10 and he was going out there 
And just, you know, obviously I'm not going to try to skip ahead, but the shit he gets into in this episode, to step back and remember he's a 10-year-old child. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll get into that as as we go fo- um, forward. But, like, his mom kind of, I mean, in a way, kind of cock blocks his fun. I mean, this boy, he's getting excited, and she takes the damn remote um, as he's getting excited and telling him to go to sleep. And she's like, well, if you don't want to go to sleep, then you should at least watch this. And it's a fucking instrumental video of Professor Oak, good old Oak like OG right there. Um, just talking about the starter Pokemon that are there, but did he not, was he not prepared to have four different trainers? Because I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I know I'm fast forwarding a little bit and we'll go back, but he's only showing Squirtle, Charmander and Bulbasaur, but he has four trainers that are coming by in the morning to get Pokemon. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that, I think they did in 98 where it's like, okay, this makes sense. But I don't think they were anticipating assholes like us sitting here going, well, actually, you know, um, I know, but, but no, it's, it's like, I was struck watching it again. Cause I, I rewatched it cause I kind of do my research, you know, I mean, I'm not even going to go that far. You told me, Hey, watch these episodes. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and I'm watching them and going, okay, so are those the only, Obviously, we don't know about Pikachu yet, obviously. No. So it's like, okay, so this is the only three he has for however many incoming trainers happen to be in Pallet Town. Pallet Town. Man, so that's like, the name. So it's like, what if... Like, so obviously he knew that there was only going to be three coming, yes. right? Yes. I mean, or he had to assume three because he only had the three. So, I mean, and we end up meeting um, two out of the three other trainers like throughout this series. I'm not sure. And maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. But do we ever because I know we meet the guy that gets um, that gets Charmander. Yes. Um, and um, let's see. OK, actually. And then Gary. Gary ends up with a – Does do we find out what po- – no, we don't find out. I was going to ask you because – and obviously we'll go back because I, I do have a, a question that I think is going to jump off a discussion. But um, yeah, we, we don't, don't find, find out, out. Because obviously what? Ash is late to the, to the selection and obviously we'll go back as to, as to why. But when he gets there, Gary is standing there with his Pokeball in his hand. And, and he, he goes, tells us that if he, if you were here, <laughs> you would have seen which Pokemon I got. But since you're late, I'm not going to even waste my breath and just walks away. So now I'm trying to sit here and I don't want to go. And obviously I'm not going to do it now because we're doing the show. And I don't know if I even want to go that far on my own time because I don't want to get too far down into a Gary rabbit hole. Cause actually, I'm sure- but I don't. I don't think we find out which Pokemon that he ended up getting because if I, we, if we did a little bit of digging, you don't think we could figure it out. Um, I mean, we might, you know what? Um, let's, let's continue this episode. I'm going to do some research on my end and maybe on episode two, um, we will kind of reveal which Pokemon he got. If it was ever revealed, um, up, up to my knowledge, because I've been rewatching these Pokemon episodes because I bought a collection off of eBay. And so I've just been running through, running my wife nuts. I, I'm on disc 10 and um, there's over 100 discs inside of this little packet thing that I bought. So I'm 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 easily in about 100 episodes right now. <laughs> and I can't think of which um, Pokemon. I have the answer. Oh, you do I don't, have. I don't know if you want it, but I have the answer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, shoot. Uh, let's 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 let, let's reveal it right now. According to an extremely quick Google search, right? Like I I just hit it as we we're standing here. Apparently, Gary ends up with Squirtle. Okay. I wonder how 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 they how, how they revealed that. Well, I'm not going to read this out loud, but I'm going to read this 
to myself and see if something. Because they have a screen. The because it's um, Bulbapedia is the as the source. So it's like a okay. It's like a Pokemon wiki. Um, and they have a screenshot of Gary with a Blastoise. Gotcha. Okay. So obviously, you know, you work backwards. Um, he got. He ended up with a Squirtle. Okay. Okay. Because I was about to say Bulbasaur, even even Bulbasaur, we don't find out who who that trainer is because the way they um, he gets Bulbasaur is a different way, which I'm not going to go over again in this episode. Right. Man, it's going to be hard to not move forward with some of these um, podcasts that we're doing. Oh, just wait until we get to them. Yeah, just wait. So I mean, that was just a that's just a quick Google search. I mean, obviously, because I'm sitting here, I'm going, if I Google this, something has to pop up, right? Uh, but again, that's something you don't think about in 98 as you're watching these episodes. Like you're just sitting there going, damn, I wonder what Pokemon he did with. Exactly. But all right. So reeling it back in, um, the next big scene, uh, well, which I, and, and I, oh, I'm sorry. Well, okay. Well, I, uh, first I want to see where you're going. Cause if, if where you're going is where, where we should be going, then I'm not going to say anything, but if you're going somewhere else, I want to jump back so where are you going so i wanted to um point this out that um ash falls asleep and he um is thinking of the first three starter pokemon bulbasaur squirtle and charmander right and every every single pokemon that he um uh, he throws and he reveals the pokemon doesn't say its name it's just a ma yeah it's just ah. a, yeah a blank, a blank you know <laughs> mouth flap is basically yeah, and obviously they kind of knew, um, and we'll get, like, w- within these first, like, 10 to 15 episodes of Pokemon, um, Japan had to kind of reel it, reel it back a little bit because they, not only did they have, um, Pokemon in the episode, but they also acted like there was a difference between regular animals, like regular fish or dogs and, um that pokemon was a completely separate thing but they were all mixed in this big world jump forward 20 years now there's nothing like that everything is pokemon every every animal that's drawn in pokemon is a pokemon like so it's humans and pokemon is what it is but back then before pokemon got blown up to what it is now and I actually remember playing in red version. You could walk up to a dog and the dog goes bow wow. You're right. In, in the game. So, but yeah, he, Ash is sleeping in his bed and he's throwing all these, um, pokeballs and he's imagining himself with all three of these Pokemon. And it's just Squirtle, Bulbasaur and Charmander. And we're like, okay, which one is he going to pick? So. I guess that leads me to my question, and I don't have to veer on the trajectory, which is nice. Because, um, I mean, we're right here. We're we're on the doorstep of the big day. So, assuming you're not a jackass and you actually don't break your alarm clock, <laughs> which I don't imagine I would be. I imagine I would have, like, six or seven alarms set, you know, in, in different places. Um and assuming you get there when you're supposed to get there. Yeah. Um, which one do you pick? Um, I've always been the fire Pokemon. So me, my, I, I always picked Charmander and in other versions, I picked like a Chimchar or a Turquig. Oh, and... Turquig was my, well, that was my dude. That was, <laughs> that was my guy. <laughs> So yeah, I've I always choose um the fire Pokemon when it comes to Pokemon games. And um now um like to this day, Nintendo just now, and I don't know why they didn't do this years back, but they they have for like the Nintendo Switch for the new Pokemon games, it's called Pokemon Home. And you can basically hoard all your Pokemon um, dating all the way back to red and blue version and basically put them in a cloud. Pokemon home is the Pokemon cloud and you can import them now into the newer versions. 
that's today. Man. It's fucking – it is ridiculous. If you were to tell me – if you were to tell fucking eight, ten-year-old me, whatever I would have been at, in 98, if you were to tell me all that, I think my head would explode. <laughs> Dude, my head would have exploded. And I would have been like, wait a minute. So you're telling me I don't have to use this long, ridiculous cable cord – Find a friend that has the exact same game and hope that he did not cheat to get this Pokemon that I'm about to trade to get into my game. Like, it is ridiculous. Did you know you can get your Pokemon account banned if you have a uh, Pokemon that was cheated and you cheated to get this in, in a version dating all the way back to fucking red and blue version? Oh, yikes. So say you use the Game Shark and you imported this Pokemon all the way up until now and you imported him into the cloud. You will get flagged for having that Pokemon because that Pokemon was not received legitimately. Well, no, but that's bullshit. Game Shark's not cheat. I know, but apparently it wasn't Nintendo made. Oh, I would fight that shit. <laughs> I would fight that shit. No, I mean, <laughs> but that's what was my night. Pokemon, because like I remember, like Ruby was my shit. Like Pokemon Ruby was my shit. It was, it was, it was the first generation of games that came out for the Game Boy Advance, and that was the game. I basically like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of that game. I never. I there's one Pokemon that I didn't catch. And I can't remember who it was without fucking digging up my fucking game. <laughs> so that was my sh- like I was running that shit. Like it just became. Oh, so did you used to get your Pokemon legitimately, or did you ever use a Game Shark to cheat to get Pokemon? Oh, I had to use. No, I never used a Game Shark. I had to. Um, a couple times I had to use the Ditto trick. Oh, okay. To, to I remember that. Certain to get certain eggs, because um, I think that was like the only way you could get the other starters. Um, yeah, and and those were fun. Just using your bike and going up and down and just making that damn egg <laughs> faster. Um, Do you remember that, missing no? Yeah, I think that was in red and blue version. That was your way of getting a uh, hundred or ninety nine uh, master balls if you wanted master oh, balls. Oh no, I I did that. I did something else to get the. I got infinite master balls somehow. Right? It might have just gotcha. it might have been ninety nine, but you know, as a kid, you think, "Fuck, I'm never going to use 99. Um, <laughs> but now yeah, you can't have enough. No, that was my shit, and I remember, you know, because at a certain point, Ruby just became like an evolving game. Like, okay, I want to take this Pokemon and evolve him, and then I'm going to put him in a box, and I'm going to take somebody else out and evolve. And just, you know, you would just run shit on the Elite Four, and just you'd be fine, and you know, you kill like an hour. But oh, I, the Elite Four. But I remember going, oh, no, I'd have to go to the nearest Pokemon Center, and I'd have to swap out, and I'd have, like, seven fucking boxes full, because you can only carry six at a time, and you can only put so many in one box where you had to open up another box, and then, but, I mean, that's first world problems, and that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. This is why this episode's going to be three and a half hours. Um, I know. All the nostalgia of us as kids playing Pokemon. Just well, wait until we get further down the line and we get into the trading cards. Wait until we hit that first fucking movie. That first movie, we're going to have to figure something out. Um, yeah, we are. But no, I mean, all that to say that I'm in total agreement with you. I would also take Charmander. Um, he was the cutest. Um, in my mind at that time, he had the best third evolution, although Blastoise was close. Um, Dude, I love I love dragons. Yeah, and I mean, as a as a kid, you're sitting there going, "If I had a Charizard, he wouldn't fucking barbecue me, boy." I'd, <laughs> yeah, I'd, he treat, would. I'd treat him right. <laughs> Dude, do you know like nowadays? Out and and don't ask me because I I I don't know the name of them. But do you know Charizard evolves? Oh well, don't they all have like. Mega forms. Mega forms and black and white and diamond and yeah, like ultra evolutions and shit now. Yes. So I I, I think it's cool. They also have shiny Pokemon. Right. And shiny. You, that was the other verb. Yeah. And yeah. you can get like a black 
Charizard now, which I think I think the black one looks fucking cool. Like, and my my son just had me find him a shiny Charmander and made me give it to him, and I was like, I want my Charizard back. <laughs> <laughs> Cause this boy, he, he, he was playing Pokemon Sword and Shield and found a way to cheat in this game. Don't ask me how, but he, he has all the Pokeballs in this game. And then it also gave him all the rare candies and he maxed his Pokemon out. And then he got mad when they didn't want to obey him because he didn't have all the badges. Right. <laughs> so he was so mad. He's like, Oh, my Pokemon are strong, but. They won't obey me. I was like, yeah. I was like, cause you, you maxed them out. <laughs> but, yeah. But we'll get, we'll, we'll get into that later on when Charizard doesn't want to obey Ash at a later, at a later stage. <laughs> so when we last left Ash, he had broken his alarm clock. So yes. he wakes up and the sun's just beaming in his room. And then he starts running in his PJs all the way down to Professor Roke's house. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Professor Oak's house in the Game Boy game was literally in front of your house. Why the hell is he walk, is he running like three miles down to Professor Oak's house <laughs> to go and get his first Pokemon? Right. <laughs> but yeah, he finally gets to Professor Oak's house. There's a crowd um, in front of Professor Oak's house. And then there we have the, the cheerleaders for Gary. And Gary is introduced. Yes. And boy, Gar- Gary, you know what? As an adult, I like Gary. But he's still a prick. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you can't completely remove that. Fa- like, and I mean, we'll get into it. Because we both, I think, had some revelations about Ash. Um, yeah, which we'll get into. We'll get. I mean, we'll (laughs) we'll get into that here in a couple minutes. Because I was, I was watching this pilot. I was like, "You're a dick. You're being a dick. Why are you being a dick? (laughs) Why are you surprised that you're being attacked?" You know. But again, I don't want to jump the gun. Um, but yeah, like as a kid, you know, Gary walks out and he's he's spinning this pokeball on his finger, and he's got the girls, and he's got the car, and for a second, you're like, I want to be like this guy. But then, like, reality hits you in the face, and you're like, no, I don't. He's a prick. Yeah, he is. Like, but how, how – did they ever say how old Gary was in this episode? Because, I mean, he has, like – he has to be a teenager in this episode. Well, he has to be, right? Because he has he has cheerleader girls, he's driving away in a car. Now wait and... a minute, wait a minute. Was he driving or was he in the back seat of that car? No, he 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 was he was he was in the back seat of the car. Okay, but but uh, okay, uh, we're, we're we're jumping forward. So Ash is running over to Professor Roke's house, and then he he runs into Gary, and Gary immediately goes and calls Ash a twerp. Right, and. And he's like, oh, you must be Ash. Oh, always late to the party, aren't you? And Ash is kind of like dumbfounded himself. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, but I'm here. I'm here. And I I, I might be speaking too much. I'll let you kind of elaborate a little bit, too, on 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 this scene. Well, and, you know, and. I think you hit the nail on the head that he has to be older because Ash is starstruck. Yeah. Like you wouldn't be starstruck if you just walked by another 10 year old. You might, no. be, you might be envious that they had a better Pokemon than you, but you wouldn't be goddamn speechless, you know? And, you know, we, we find out right away and it's almost a throwaway line that that's his, that um, professor Oak is Gary's uncle. Yes. Like, it's almost like a throw, like, oh, that's just my uncle. It's like, no, that should be a big oh, deal. Oh, no, not uncle, his grandfather. Grandfather. Yes. And it's like, that, no, but that should be a bigger deal. And they just kind of treat it like, oh, yeah, it's my grandfather. It's like, how? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he, 
and he Gary goes, and you're always late to the party, but you snooze, you lose. I already got my Pokemon and you don't. And Ash is like, well, what Pokemon did you get? And he's like, well, if you would have showed up on time, um, you would have seen. But you snooze, you lose. And kind of just takes off with Gary and Ash is kind of, again, as I, and I'm, this is the word of the podcast is dumbfounded. He's just dumbfounded. He's like, okay, okay. Well, what Pokemon am I going to get if, if Gary already got his Pokemon? And then, um, and that's the first time we actually see Professor Oak. Yeah. He just pops his head out and is like, oh, Ash. And like, you know, Ash is like, well, I'm here. I overslept. I'm an idiot, but I'm here. <laughs> so the crowd kind of disappears and Professor Oak is like, all right, well, I mean, I didn't know that you were still coming, but since you're still here, let's go inside and get you a nice little Pokemon. This is, this is the first point of Oak is a dick here. Um, yes. <laughs> because this motherfucker knew goddamn well that there was no Pokemon in those balls. Yeah, he brought them to the to the chamber and the chamber opens and Professor Oak is just standing there going, OK, there's no Pokemon here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna let him go through this. And Ash goes through this whole thing, and well, I thought about it, and I've slept on it, and I'm gonna. Who does he choose first? He wanted Charmander. He goes, I'm gonna go with Charmander, and the ball opens, and it's nothing. He goes, Well, that Pokemon was chosen by a boy who was here on time. It's like, oh, that's a sick burn, but okay. <laughs> and he goes, Well, that's fine, because I really wanted to go. Went oh. to first without looking at Bulbas, 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 Bulbasaur was the second one. He goes, well, I, Bulbasaur. He goes, that Pokemon was also chill. Oh, it's like, all right, so you got a theme going here, don't you? <laughs> and then he's like, okay, well, you know what? It doesn't really matter because I'll choose Squirtle. And Squirtle, he's like, Squirtle was also taken by a trainer who was here on time. It's like, I, I but, got it after the first one. <laughs> he's like, but... Um, I do have one extra Pokemon here, which I mean, and we and we find out later that this is a whole Professor Oak has thousands of Pokemon inside of his home. And the fact that he only had these three as a starter and then he's giving out a charity case as a Pikachu and he knows Pikachu has a problem, which, you know, we don't we, we don't find out the origin of Pikachu until this um, new season that's getting ready to drop on Netflix next month. So we will be covering that in five years. Yes. <laughs> because um, they, they actually show um, Pikachu starting off as a Pichu and oh, going fuck. through and, and what, and what ends up, I, I didn't watch the whole episode. I just, skim skim the episode and yeah he starts off as a pichu and what made pikachu so irritable the way that he is today don't make me or, get hype on this because i don't need this in my life <laughs> <laughs> well I, i'll just put it this way i still don't know because i didn't watch it because i didn't want to fast forward all the way through but it's only in japanese right now it hasn't dropped oh, on well. on netflix yet the english version but Netflix is the new owner of Pokemon. So Cartoon Network is no longer the owner of all the Pokemon episodes. Netflix actually got a hold of it. Good for Netflix. I know. So, so but yeah, he, he, he was going to choose Squirtle and then Professor Oak uses the dick line. The early bird gets the worm or in this case, the, the, Squirtle. the Pokemon. Oh, that, okay, that's a good... <laughs> That's good. Like you should have led with that one and not used it on your third go around. I know. <laughs> now, here's here's something that kind of lends credence to the theory that he knew for sure that there was three new trainers going to start today. And just maybe Ash's starting paperwork was late or something. Because <laughs> obviously he had those three queued up ready, right? And it's just yes. kind of a first come first serve thing, and you feel like in 2020 you would have to fill out a form and you could actually register. Like, no, I want Charmander. But so it's kind of a <laughs> first come, so. right? And it's kind of a first come first serve thing. So you know, Gary and the other two get there because they're good boys and they know how to set alarm clocks and not throw them in their sleep. Um. 
so he knew about them. And then it's, it's, it's at that point that he looks out after Gary's crowd of admirers is gone. And he goes, oh, shit, there's a boy standing there in his PJs. Oh, shit, that's probably the kid whose paperwork came in late. But he paid the registration fee, so I got to figure something out. Yeah. So out comes from the middle of this generator box an extra Pokeball that has an elect. Uh, and this is the only time we see this Pokeball. Yes. But, uh, but the Pokeball Maybe has an electric. Maybe that's why he doesn't go light. in the damn balls. Because it's not his ball. Maybe. Maybe if Ash would have kept that specific Pokeball he came out of, he wouldn't have had all this trouble that he's about to have in 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, we're, we're, we're about to go down a big rabbit hole when we start breaking the rest of this episode down. Yeah. But, he said, but uh, but this Pokemon kind of has issues. And Ash is like, well, I kind of need a Pokemon. And Professor Oak is very hesitant, but he hands him the damn Pokeball. But how the fuck did he get Pikachu in this ball and Pikachu don't ever want to go back in? Well, right. And that's kind of the, I mean, are we dealing with a with an Oak exotic kind of thing? Are we, you know, how are we, how is, how is Professor Oak managing this, this rambunctious Pikachu? Well, I mean, if if I'm basing this off of um, Pokemon games and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, it's revealed that Ash um, was going into the wild. He got attacked by a Pikachu. I mean, I guess that that wouldn't go with the storyline here, but he gets attacked by a Pikachu. Professor Oak comes out and throws a Pokeball at the Pikachu and captures it, and then Gary on the inside goes, you know what? I can't wait anymore. And he takes the other Pokeball in this Eevee and Professor Oak goes, okay, well you can have Pikachu. That's rewriting the whole fucking thing. Yeah, it is. I mean, now, now, now that I'm thinking about it, cause as, as I'm telling the story, I was like, well, Gary ended up getting Eevee as the first Pokemon. Right. And Eevee, Eevee, well, I can't wait till we actually hit that Eevee episode. Cause I mean, that one, because Eevee is fucking fascinating. Yeah, yeah, he really is. Eevee a dog, is low-key one of my favorites. A dog Pokemon that has about seven or eight different evolutions as uh, um, up to date as of right now. Well, I think I think as as far as we're concerned, by the time we cover that episode, it's only the base three, so we shouldn't be jumping the gun too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's going to be... That's why doing this, these early episodes sucks, because it's like, yeah, but once we get to this episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so Ash is desperate, and so he takes the Pikachu, and he comes out of the ball, and it's a it's a little mouse. I was about to say rat. I was like, that's not right. It's a little oh, mouse. And Pikachu looks different than he does now. He, he looks fatter. Yeah, um, he's fat. <laughs> and... But he, to but to be honest, Pikachu was fat in the original game too. Well, yeah, I mean we've all played Yellow. Um, <laughs> so he goes, "Well, this is Pikachu," and Ash is like, "So you're gonna be my Pokemon?" And Pikachu's like, "I suppose." And, and then just shocks the fuck out of him. Well, he fucking grabbed him. Who fucking just grabs? A random Pokemon that you've just been told has anger. Well, not anger, but has an issue. It fucking squeezes him. Like, he he's like smothering Pikachu in his chest. And Pikachu's like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't know you. Shock you. Like, like, you don't even go here. Like, and the But the animation when he's getting shocked is just amazing. It's just... Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, and Professor Oak doesn't even do anything. Like a ten-year-old boy is getting shocked inside of your home, and you're just standing there going, "Well, I told you, Pikachu has issues. He well, doesn't like being in his Pokeball." Right. He was told he has issues. He was probably told to be here at a certain time. He's late. Oak's got shit to do, so he's probably just trying to get Ash out the way. Yeah. He's like, fine, I'll give you this Pikachu. I mean. Which, again, lends credence to the fact that he thought Ash might be there because he did have 
Oh, poor, Pika- poor, poor. Pikachu in the globe. But he's like, I'm not going to hit this button unless this Ketchum kid shows up. Exactly. And then the next scene we have is Professor Oak giving him six Pokeballs and then the infamous Pokedex, the original red OG Pokedex, which uh, which we find out is kind of a smart ass. Uh, well, y- yeah. Um, <laughs> y- yeah, it's like S- Siri with an attitude. Um, <laughs> but also something I might have picked up about the Pokedex, which I could be off base on, which is why I'm glad to be doing this episode. Well, this show with you because I can workshop this shit. Is the Pokedex standard issue? Because uh, in episode I don't think so. Two, in episode two, and I, again, I don't mean to be jumping too far ahead. Joy kind of flips out when she sees yeah. the Pokedex. Like it's not like, oh, this is your Pokedex. She's like, oh shit, a Pokedex. You know, like she knows what it is, but it's not like you know, like like everyone has one. It, it's not, yeah, it's not like a driver's license or whatever. You know, and I I would like to say that it's standard issue, but um, as we get further into the episodes, Misty doesn't have a Pokedex. Her sisters don't have a Pokedex. Brock doesn't have a Pokedex. And they're trainers, and so you would think if anybody. They, they would have a yeah. damn Pokedex. So what I'm gathering, because, and I'm, like I said, we, we fast forward, and but we'll, we'll reel it back. Um, you're only allowed six Pokemon um, on you at a time, and the and the seventh Pokemon gets transported back over to oh, Professor. Oh, the first time that happens, too. But that, again, that's another one. Wait till we get to that episode. But the first time that happens is some shit in it. Yeah, it is. So, and it gets transferred over to Professor Oak, but um, but Misty and Brock end up telling Ash, "Yo, you didn't know, but yeah, yeah, you're." you're your seventh Pokemon goes back to um, basically wherever your Pokedex is registered to. So I guess all the professors give out their their specific um, Pokedex, and it it goes back over to that professor. So a Pokedex is standard issue. You would think so, yes. Because but I, a trainer I, would have to be registered with a home pokemon center to have additional pokemon transferred to right yes but i mean a a reason and we'll and there's a trainer and i won't go through that episode but there's a trainer um later in the series actually within the first um maybe the first 20 episodes he has over like 30 pokeballs with him and he carries them in a net yeah yeah and there, there's also another episode that will go down um, probably – you listening to this today, probably in about three months. <laughs> um, there, there, there's a Farfetch'd episode, and that trainer has more than six Pokemon because he carries all of his Pokemon in his backpack. So I don't think it's like standard, but I think if you're going to get a license to actually be a Pokemon trainer, then you get – the Pokedex. Otherwise, you can just get Pokeballs and capture Pokemon. But I think they only go to trainers who are trying to get into like the Pokemon leagues and doing all and getting badges and stuff. Well, that makes perfect sense. Yes, I, I mean, know. no, it does. I mean, like, because like, yeah, anyone can catch Pokemon, right? Because they're wild animals, right? Yes. But Ash and Gary and insert other names here. The asshole that took Charmander. Right. And, you know, boy, we'll get to him in a minute. Well, not in a minute, but we'll get to him. Um, (laughs) I mean, if we think Ash is bad. Um, I know. But so, but they're specific, you know, they filed for licenses and and they want to become professional Pokemon trainers, which would stand to reason why they would need to be registered, especially essentially with the government. Um, because they're not just catching these Pokemon for shits. Correct. You know, they're they're trying to make something of themselves. So, you know, they're, you know, officially licensed and bonded. And, you know, they've got a home base, essentially. Whatever. So that makes perfect sense. 
I think I think me and you just unraveled our own mystery. I think we just <laughs> cracked the code. We've only been on this thing for like 45 minutes. I know, and we're only six minutes into the episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that. Uh, I, so Ash goes to get the Pokeball in the Pokedex, and Pikachu, he's still holding Pikachu, even though he just got shocked, and Pikachu just shocks the mess out of both Professor Oak and Pikachu, well, I mean, and, and Ash. Yeah, and you're sitting there going, why didn't Oak get shocked the first time? And he got shot, well, obviously, it's because Ash is grabbing the Pokeball out of Oak's hand, and it's, you know, the transference and everything. So, so this yet, 10-year-old child has been shocked twice, and shit hasn't even started for him. No, and he's about to, he's going to get shocked even more <laughs> as the episode goes on. Um, so, but, he but walks yeah. outside, and he's, and he's greeted by, essentially, the the, the the city folks. The city folk, you know, essentially the Ash, you know, the Ash fan, you know, fan club. Right. And, you know, his, his mom is front and center and everything. She's got all his provisions and his underwear and stuff. And this was the first moment that legitimately got me and made me laugh out loud. Because... His mom makes the astute observation, so obviously mom's with it. She goes, well, he's cute, but aren't they supposed to be in Pokeballs? And Ash goes, oh, yeah, like you would think he'd go, yeah, I should try to get this fucker in a ball. Anyway, he's been shocking me for half an hour. <laughs> so Ash, you know, oh, Poke uh, Pikachu getting a ball. Did Pikachu, nope. Nope. I, I said, getting a ball, nope. And and they volley back and forth for, I mean, what, maybe 20 seconds? Yeah, and he's like, but um, I want to really back, because he made a line in this in this episode that I just want to um, reference. Um, so when, when his mom says, uh, oh, so that's your Pikachu? And he's like, yeah, that's my Pokemon. Pikachu literally um, crosses his arms and looks away and goes, chew. As if he said, no, I'm not your Pokemon, and you're not my master. Right. But oh, and, I, and I forgot his mom goes, as they're going, as they're volleying the ball back and forth, she goes, oh, they're already getting along, they're playing catch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, getting the ball, two, Pika, two, Pika, two, Pika, and it's just hilarious. It alternates between, <laughs> it alternates between bouncing off his head, Bouncing off his tail and bouncing off what I what I assume to be his midsection. <laughs> and Professor Oak is just standing there, just stone faced. Motherfucker, <laughs> he's, not, he's not blinking. He's no. Just... He's... <laughs> <laughs> but I have my observations, which I guess I mean at the end. Once we finish this episode, actually, you know what? Fuck it. I think Ash's mom and Professor Oak, as we get further into this series, I think they're dating. Because she is always with Professor Oak. Always. Yeah, but I don't know if I want to think about that. I don't either, but, I mean, obviously his his father's not in the picture, and still to this day, we don't know who Ash's father is well, in Pokemon. and I feel like that's going to have to be like a separate episode. We're, we're not specifically carrying it up, covering an episode, but we're like diving into Pokemon conspiracy theories. Yeah. And I don't want to get into it because even a truncated version is like 15 minutes that we don't need to spend on the first episode. <laughs> hey, for real. But I know you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Because I know you you know you're on the boards and shit. But yeah, so I feel like maybe that's something maybe we could do like at the end of season one or maybe when it gets a little bit more relevant, maybe around the movie or whatever. Yeah, I was about to say, maybe we can reference it right before we recap the movie and we do a three-hour-long podcast. <laughs> maybe, maybe we break that one up. <laughs> <laughs> break it up into episodes. <laughs> Half-hour segments. Yeah, half segment. <laughs> because did you, I um, mean, and Pokemon, um, they, they've had many different movies, but the beginning episode of Pokemon revolves around um, Mewtwo Strikes Back, 
There's also another Pokemon movie called, I believe it's called The Power of Us. Um, or no, it's called um, Pokemon I Choose You. And it's a whole movie of the first episode and his ventures. And they basically do like the first like five, four or five episodes in one big chunk along with involving like more recent day Pokemon in that episode too. Hmm. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll go down that rabbit hole. We'll, we'll, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we'll do our Pokemon movies kind of out of order, just the way that the Pokemon movies were made just to kind of stay on track. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll, we'll hit that when we, when we can, but yeah, back to the episode, um, Ash picks up Pikachu again for the third time and Pikachu um, gets pissed off again and just shocks Ash and shocks his mom. Well, his shocks... mom says something. Oh, actually, and I can get that line right now. That pisses Pikachu off, right? Oh, she calls Pikachu weird. Yeah. Because, because Pikachu doesn't want to get into the Pokeball. Right. And Pika- Pikachu's like weird. And then it has the little crossbow uh emoji like above his head which i i I don't think they could get away with these days (laughs) well i mean it's anime maybe true and then pikachu's like weird and then just shocks the fuck out of everyone shocks everybody and professor oak has enough nerve to jump back well again and that's you know and that's another thing why did the whole crowd get it but oak didn't and i i i want to imagine it's because he was behind that brick wall (laughs) I well I I think it's because Pikachu was aiming the um electricity over at the mother because the mother called the Pikachu weird <laughs> and everyone's just around the mom so everyone got it. Ah, well that's what they get for <laughs> standing in a line. And that's what Ash gets for grabbing Pikachu again even yeah, though yeah. Pikachu and then Professor Oak says go and get those rubber gloves that you um that your mom gave you. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I should." Yeah, so. that was the first like eye roll because he's like, "Why?" And Oak, Oak, straight out of like a, like a made for school thing is like, "Cause rubber conducts electricity." And I was like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> Using logic in a kids show. I was like, "Fuck!" They're trying to teach me something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so we've officially started on our journey, and we have the first instance of Ash being a dick. <laughs> he was dragging Pikachu. <laughs> Out oh, the man. box, like right away, like just he was dragging him. It wasn't even like a proper leash. It looked like an extra long shoelace. <laughs> he tied it around. My thing is, how the hell did he get it tied around Pikachu without Pikachu shocking him a million times? Unless he he put those gloves on. I mean, he had and... the gloves, right? So I, I imagine he left Oak's house with his gloves and his underwear that his mom tells him that he needs to change every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he he then kneels down to Pikachu and like Pikachu, can't we ba- basically saying can't we be pals? And he's like, are you not listening to me because you don't like me? And Pikachu nods his head. Yet yeah. is Pikachu a boy or a girl? You know, I always assumed he was a boy. I don't know why. I think I think it's it's simply because I'm a boy. And I think Pikachu's cool, so Pikachu has to be a boy. Exactly. But I mean, I'm sure I'm, and I'm sure we're probably and watch Pikachu be a girl. But I'm gonna Google at the um once we're done with this episode to find out if Pikachu's a boy or a girl, if we end up finding out. But I'm gonna call him a boy for right now. But yeah, he. I mean, he remember had, when we thought it would take us a week to figure out what Pokemon Gary started with? True. It so. is. It is just a quick Google search. So, and I'm sure, and I, I think I hear you in the back right now. You're you're finding out if Pikachu's a boy or a girl, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm looking up porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you to not be looking at that while we're doing a podcast, though. Yeah, well, don't tell let's, me how to live my life. Let's see. Is Pikachu? Oh, right there. Number two, um, search. Let's see. Female Pikachus have heart-shaped lightning bolt tails, and males have lightning bolt tails without the heart shape on the end. Well, so, then he's so, a boy. Yeah, it's a boy. Well, there you go. I feel like that was in the game, too. 
<laughs> it had to be, right? And we just didn't register it. Yeah, we just didn't register that Pikachu. We're like, I wonder if it's a boy or a girl. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we can make this an adult anime cartoon and just say, all right, just look at the bottom. <laughs> We gave him a little, a, a, a little peek in that. <laughs> but, uh, but the line of the podcast, this has to be the line, and maybe you have a different line. But he's, but Ash goes, Pikachu, can't you just open your mouth and <laughs> tell me what is wrong? And Pikachu just looks at him and opens his mouth and goes. Ah! <laughs> and Ash just looks into his mouth. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Ash is like, that's not what I meant. I mean, but to be fair, he didn't specify. He just said, "Open your mouth and tell me what's wrong." For real. But then we go to where we find out that the Pokedex is an asshole. Yes. <laughs> You want to cover this part, Doug? <laughs> so, are, are we talking about the first time he accesses the Pokédex, right? Yeah, so, because he, he accesses it because Pikachu doesn't want to get inside of its Pokéball. So he's trying to figure out, how can I get him inside of his Pokéball? So, let's go to the Pokédex. So, basically, it's it's a standard issue Wikipedia answer of, most wild Pokémon need to go in balls while they're being trained. And then there's, I feel like there's a comma in the sentence, because it's like, however, some Pokemon don't like being in balls. It's like, well, that doesn't help me at all. That's just the situation <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> so he's like, like okay, well. I knew I'll... that. I wanted an answer. But the Pokedex basically tells him, it's like, well, your Pokemon has to respect you in a way. Like, they go into their Pokeballs for respected trainers. And Ash is like, okay, well, maybe I can have you trust me. I'll take you. I'll take the leash off of you. I'll take these gloves off. And he puts his finger out to the Pikachu again, which, I mean, luckily he didn't get shocked. But God damn it, Ash, have, have you not learned? Like, this is an electric Pokemon. You have been shocked three times. And you, Stop and you it. Just, and you just threw down the gloves. Like. <laughs> Quit it. <laughs> Like, but uh, but Pikachu still doesn't want to listen to him. And then out comes the first wild Pokemon that we all got sick of. As I don't know about you, but I got sick of fighting Pidgeys at the beginning of Pokemon games. Oh. And a, a fucking Pidgey comes out um, in the wild. And Ash is like, oh, it's a Pidgey. And I, I can catch this Pokemon. And fucking the Pidgey has none of it because well, he throws the pokeball and doesn't catch it he did yeah he does the he does the thing we all did when we first got the game right you said well all you got to do is throw a ball and then you you you, you, you catch him and then he's yours and you move on and that first time a pokemon broke out of a, a ball i don't know about you but i was like oh so that was a waste is, of a ball this is life and i don't get that but it's not like you know, the game where it just comes back to Ash. Like, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone, and we don't get to use that Pokeball. Oh, and Pokeballs cost $200 a piece? Yeah. <laughs> so, it up for Christmas at that point. Mother. So, Ash tells Pikachu, he's like, Pikachu, let, let's go and cap capture this Pidgey. And Pikachu just looks away again and goes, chill. Nah, fam, and I'm going like, to go up in this tree here. <laughs> take a nap but it's it, it, he, he just yawns and he's like he runs in trees like Cha! <laughs> I was like what an asshole and Pika, this is when Pikachu just becomes comical because Ash is like okay you don't want to help me then I'll capture this this Pidgey on my own <laughs> oh comi no I have this down as Ash is a dick part two Okay, you. I'll, I'll have you tell this part. <laughs> because he goes, well, I'm just going to have to do it myself. And he fucking takes his pajama shirt and goes, <laughs> I'm just going to ambush this wild bird. 
and he apologizes as he's in midair, but then Pidgey kicks up a, a gust. wind gust, and <laughs> you know, you know, has none of it, and fucking Pikachu's up in the tree, fucking peeing himself, and then he turns around and a uh, goddamn Radita has has gone through his backpack. And the, and the <laughs> Pokédex like, get calls out of there. Him, and the Pokédex calls him out on it again. He calls him stupid. He calls him stupid. Because <laughs> the Pokédex says yes. Or it goes and tries to get wild berries for trainers who leave their bag, or for stupid trainers that leave their bag on the ground. <laughs> I was Ash, like, oh, A- Ash is like, oh, oh, word. <laughs> He's like, I'm stupid. It's like, it's like I didn't sign up for this. But um, one one thing the po- we we missed one thing the Pokédex said, and I and we'll rewind just for a second when he when he threw the Pokéball at the Pidgey before the Pidgey um ran away the first time because we we see the Pidgey twice in this episode, right? Um, uh, the after he throws the Pokéball and the Pokéball comes back to Ash, the Pokédex goes off on its own and goes, "You usually have your Pokémon battle." Ah, yeah, Pokemon. I forgot about that. One. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to capture the Pokemon, and the and Pikachu's up in the tree, just on its back, just kicking and screaming and laughing. And I'm like, oh wow, Pikachu's a dick. <laughs> no, I'm 100 percent on Pikachu's side here. This motherfucker picked me up. He was told, and I assume Pikachu understands English because he knows enough to turn away from Ash, and he knows enough to open his mouth when Ash asks. So I I'm assuming that Pikachu knows English. Yes. Well, I, I would think you would have to because uh, because Pikachu, I mean, all Pokemon have to know when to do their attacks. So right. I, I, I think English or Japanese, if you're um, someone that watches it in Japanese, the Pokemon have to be fluent to your native language right. in so, order to be able so to that, do their stuff. So that brings me back to my, my point is Pikachu sitting there on that table. As Oak says, well, this Pokemon has issues. <laughs> so Pikachu hears Oak warn Ash. Here's well, this, in Pikachu's kid. defense, that that Pokeball was not opened yet before or when Professor Oak said that. Oh. Because remember, he handed it to Ash and said, well, this Pokemon has issues, but if you really want a Pokemon, well, here. <laughs> But that oh, kind well, of breaks that's, the that's fourth fair. wall yeah, itself fair. because that breaks the fourth wall because Pokemon um, that we find out in later in the series, they can hear you inside of their Pokeball. So, yeah, yeah that, that kind of, I don't know if I like kind of, that, though. Like, it backs up my theory, but I don't know if I like that. Why is that? Well, because when you recall a Pokemon in the in the series anyway. It turns into this red light, right? Yes. Because you say, you know, Geodude return or whatever the fuck, you know, and it, and it vaporizes into this red light. So you're telling me in the midst of that Pokemon, and it comes out the same way, right? It comes out in a red outline, and then it becomes the Pokemon. So you're telling me even in that stage where the Pokemon is either being recalled or some or I shouldn't say summoned, but you know, called out for battle or you know whatever. You're telling me even in that state, the Pokemon can hear and understand the trainer. Yes, that's creepy. It's very creepy. But a lot of things they do in Pokemon is kind of creepy in my eyes. At least in the beginning of the uh, of the series that we'll get into in further episodes. But you you learn a lot, and the way that they actually uh, advertise the Pokemon game within the episodes is very strategic and it's smart. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for goodness sakes, they hit you right over the head with the opening. Exactly. You know, from jump. So, but, so yeah, the the Pidgey has gotten the better of him, and Ash and it's blown away. So now he picks up a rock. And this is and Ash think- is a dick part three. 
and this is probably <laughs> the worst offense of the episode. Oh man, I, I could not believe believe this. I mean, the but freaking I, leash on Pikachu is probably the second worst thing, but this is by far the worst. <laughs> he throws this rock, thinking that um, he's throwing a rock at the Pidgey so he can knock out the fucking Pidgey so he can capture it on his own. Like, I don't know about you, but if I was a Pokemon and you caught me by throwing a damn rock at me and knocking me out, I don't know if I would want to listen to you. Well, and I mean, we'll get to this when we get into Ash catching some of his other Pokemon. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I can take a step back and at least get into Ash's headspace. I don't like it and I don't agree with it. But he's sitting there going, okay, the one Pokemon that I'm supposed to have is up in a tree laughing at me. Yes. I'm not going to catch anything with this Pikachu making an ass out of me. I got to figure something out. And obviously my shirt wasn't going to do it. And I'm a little mad. So I'm going to throw this rock. Now, you should never now, throw a rock ever. But, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to give him a defense and it, it, it was never shown in an episode, but back when in red and blue version, it, when you go to the Safari zone and you're not allowed to use your own Pokemon, they give you <laughs> either a treat or a rock to throw at the Pokemon in order to catch them. So like if you're battling a Kangaskhan, you're trying to sit there and feed it treats. Like you feed it treats, but, but, and it makes it harder to catch the Pokemon or you can throw a rock and the rock makes the Pokemon weaker. So you're able to catch it easier with a Safari ball. So they're kind of abusive towards animals in Pokemon, if you kind of think about it. Maybe that's why that episode didn't – well, I mean, obviously, we'll get into why that episode didn't make it. Um, <laughs> and we are going to review those banned episodes, just saying, everybody. Then, so when we get to them, yeah, we'll get to them. And I don't want to get into it because I'll go off on another half-hour thing because that was so that was, confusing. Because I can't – it might have been the episode where Ash catches his seventh Pokemon. Something said about, well – Gary's only got this many Pokemon, but Ash has a bunch, and Ash is all happy and shit. And he goes, and But they're all Tauros. From the Safari Zone, and I'm going, I have watched this series back to front three times, and I have missed that episode. Because in my head, I'm, I'm thinking I missed it. I didn't know about, <laughs> you know, stuff getting pulled from running orders and shit. I know they they banned that episode because of the gun violence, but I mean they banned a lot of stuff in season one that we will be covering within these episodes because we have them and they're accessible. And some episodes that weren't even um, dubbed into English, well, we're gonna go over it because fuck it if Japan didn't have subtitles. Right. So <laughs> so yeah, we'll hit those episodes when we can. But um back on track with the episode, Ash gets this rock and then he throws it. And it hits this bird in the head and you and you see um like the old animation welt of a uh bump just in, increasing on the top of this Pokémon's head and the Pokémon turns around and it's none other than Spearow. And this is another uh, check mark in the this Pokemon Pokedex might be alive kind of thing because you know Ash <laughs> has it in his hand obviously and he and that that's a Spiro and Spiros are more temperamental than Pidgeys like how you know why would the Pokedex bring up Pidgey if Ash didn't just have that kerfuffle with the Pidgey five seconds ago exactly and now. And it also says um, Pidgeys have a temper, but they also not only attack Pokemon, but when they get really angry, sometimes attack humans. Oh well, yeah, I like that where he's like, well, they have a they have a vicious streak towards um, you know trained Pokemon. I was like, that's a nice little pickup. But yeah, he's like, you know, if they get real pissed off, like when somebody throws a fucking rock at them. <laughs> They will attack humans. And I'm like, well, yeah. So then, you know, one charges at him. Um, Ash ducks. Pikachu gets 
kind of swiped at uh, gets yeah. mad, and this is and that's the only reason he sends the thundershock up because the Spiro almost knocks him off the branch. Yeah, but that uh, I want to make note of this too, Doug. This is the first instance where we find out not all Pokemon see color. So as Spiro is flying through the air, Spiro only sees in black and white. Yeah, it was like a uh, uh, what uh, I'm not for, is it like manga? It looked it yeah, looked like right out of a manga. Um, yes, and you know that's a nice sequence, but it saw enough to to focus in on the Pikachu on the branch. But then the you know Pikachu shocks him and knocks him back, and Ash is like, "Well, you got him," and then the Spiro wakes back up and sends out a call for the rest of the Spiro in the tree. And then it, there's a really nice shot that I made note of, like, bang on. Um, when they are, when they've turned to run, or they're running, right? And it's the first, it's, it's Pikachu and Ash are running with the Spiro in the, behind them, right? Yes. Look straight up like the birds from Hitchcock. It does. I'm looking like, at that right now. I was like, that's a great shot. Like, nobody fucking picked that up when they're watching. Like, I didn't pick it up as a kid. But like, that's a great shot. And as they're running, you get um, you get to see other Pokemon. Like, um, you have your Sandshrew. You have your Mank- Mankey um, all hanging out in the tree. Yeah. And Ash is just running for his damn life because the... The Spiro called for more Spiro to come down, and Pikachu's like, "Fuck you! I'm gonna run away!" and just runs ahead of him. <laughs> I almost imagine Pikachu's just doing the Leroy Jenkins run, just like, "I'm gonna go ahead of you because it's a, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna get mine. You can do one." Yeah, and you you can do whatever you want to you, but um, this is when. I kind of actually started feeling a little bad. This was the down point of the episode, and we only have five minutes left of the episode, but the Spiros start attacking Ash, and they finally catch up to him. But not only do they catch up to Ash, they catch up to po- um, to Pikachu, and Pikachu is getting pelted by the move Peck because these Spiros are just assholes. Yeah, and I mean, I felt bad for for Pikachu. I didn't. I mean, I felt bad for Ash up to a point, right? Like, it's like, yeah, he's being attacked by wild Pokemon, but he threw a fucking rock. Like, he did. I mean, but all because Pikachu didn't want to, um, didn't want to attack. So, I mean, but you I, saw even when he did, it, the Spiro still didn't play fair. Hell no, he didn't. Like Pikachu did Thunder Shock, and Pikachu must be a level two, and Spiro and Spiro must be a level four because uh, it only killed half of his damn life. <laughs> but um, Ash um, picks up Pikachu that's getting pelted by the move Pack, and he comes to a waterfall and he jumps into the waterfall, and that's when you get introduced to some water Pokemon. Really you see good a- shot here. Really good shot. You had a, a Magic Carp. Um- Blink and you miss it, and then you were confronted head on with a Gyarados. Yes. Uh, oh shit. And Ash is like, "Well, fuck." <laughs> and then this is the first time we meet uh, Misty. Yes. Who who is fishing on the on the side of a pond, and she gets all happy because she's about to capture a water Pokemon. I mean. I imagine her standing there with that rod just, and the way it's being jerked around in the water. If I'm her, I'm thinking I hooked that fucking Gyarados. <laughs> like, I know. Like, could you imagine um, catching a damn? Actually, I, I'm not even going to lie. I caught a Gyarados in Pokemon Fire Red the I, other day. I caught a, a red scale Gyarados, I believe in gold, maybe. Ooh. It's either nice. gold or ruby, but I remember it was red scale. That's nice. But uh, but yeah, uh, Misty flings the fishing rod out of the water, and out comes Ash and Pikachu. And Misty is just a 
bitch. She's like, oh, it's just a kid. Well, and I would have had the same reaction. I was like, oh, this dumb kid's in the water. But then, you know, I look down and it's got a freaking wounded Pikachu. So I would have had the same reaction. But then, you know, that damn kid steals my bike. Exactly. And <laughs> Misty's look, Misty's over there all concerned for Pikachu and goes, oh, are you OK? And Ash thinks she's talking to him. He's like, yeah, I'm fine. She's like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about your dear little Pikachu. And he's like, well, obviously they're not. I mean, look, I mean, obviously we're not. We didn't just go for a swim. <laughs> But uh, I, I okay, I kind of blame this on Misty a little bit because she's like, oh, he's wounded. How could you let Pikachu get this wounded? There's a Pokemon Medical Center uh, right down the block. You can just go over there and get it. And Ash being Ash is like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. And then fucking steals her bike. Yeah, but I'm going to take this bike, though, real quick. And then, you know, she's like, and he's like, well, I'll return it later. I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll talk about it later in the next <laughs> episode. Um, and then he takes off, and we had a little bit of E.T. vibes because Pikachu's in the basket, and Ash is pedaling with all he's got. And you go over that, it's not a big cliff, but it's enough of a jump that Ash gets air. Yeah. And Rex. Because Ash is pedaling for his damn life. Because the Spiro are still are, chasing. Yeah, him. are still on him. Um, and it's it's starting to rain. It's starting to lightning outside. And and they wreck. And you know they both go down in a heap. And Ash crawls over, and is like, "Look, this would be a whole lot easier if you just get in this damn ball." And Pikachu is just. I mean, he, you know and. He sticks to his guns, but I don't think it's a matter of sticking to his guns. I think it's a matter of he's just exhausted at this point. Wouldn't you be? He's I a mean, 10-year-old yeah. boy that's been running for his life for what seems to be hours in a half-hour episode. And these Spiro are just not li- and are just not like giving up at all. And I don't know if I saw in that shot, but there might be some Spiro's uh it like on his tail as well. Um, if there are, they're not shouted out. Okay. I mean, and obviously, as a viewer watching this episode, you wouldn't know what a Fero is at this point, anyway. So it wouldn't. You wouldn't want to do it because Ash would have to pull out his Pokédex in the midst of being chased down. Yeah. And go, oh, this is the evolutionaries, and then we got to stop and discuss what evolutionary states are, and then that's just a whole. We only have three three minutes left in this damn episode. <laughs> For real. But yeah, Ash is sitting here now and he he's he's like, Okay, Pikachu, you don't want to get in this Pokeball? Well, I'll I'll get these Sparrow off your tail and he just stands up in the rain. He's all drenched and he's looking at these Spiro and he's like, you want me? Come get me, but leave my Pikachu alone. This is straight out of fucking Scream where the girl stands up in the middle of the quad and goes, what are you waiting for? Come kill me. (laughs) (laughs) And Pikachu, dude, this was such a good moment in Pokemon because Pikachu is looking at Ash um, trying to risk his life to save him. And Pikachu is like, you know what? Maybe he's not bad. And Pikachu just jumps on his shoulder, jumps into the air, and fucking shocks these Spiro and scares them. But the what what I like about it is is Pikachu like the animation is just amazing because you just see Pikachu slowly running and then just boom, just thunderbolt. No, it's a great shot, but and this is something that. Obviously, I can only do with the benefit of a couple of, a couple extra years on top of me. It's pouring down rain, right? Yes. Would Pikachu's Thundershock be this strong in a rainstorm? Um. Well, I don't think that was really a Thundershock. That kind of looked like more of a Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, maybe? Yeah, to where because it, it it was a big ball and it exploded. And when it exploded, they actually made Ash 
like blast back from the Thunderbolt. So not only is Ash getting blast back, but it's going forward and hitting all the raindrops and then hitting these wet Spiro that are in the air as well. So yeah, I can see, I can see it being that strong. Well, yeah. And uh, you just hit the nail on the head as well. Those Spiros have been flying in the rain as well. So they're pretty much dampened down. So yeah, I mean, that's a good catch. And then from there, the, uh, after Pikachu does that, the rain clears up and Pikachu goes over to Ash showing Ash that, um, he now trusts him. And this is when we get the first glance that we didn't know as children, but we get the first glance of a legendary Pokemon, Ho-Oh, which is not even within the first 150 Pokemon um, in the Pokemon series. And once again, the Pokedex is alive because some Pokemon are no- unknown to this world to this day. Like, how? go to bed. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I wasn't talking to you. I, I didn't hit the on button. What are you doing? What is it? This is defective. It's been shocked. I'm going to return this. And um, I'm I'm going to state this only because uh, me and my son ended up watching this movie. But we watched um, the movie called Pokemon I Choose You. And they showed basically, I guess you can call it a deleted scene from the episode, but they added a scene. So during this scene, as Ho-Oh is flying over them, Ho-Oh drops one of its feathers and Ash gets this feather and puts it in his bag. That's the only way that you're going to be able to see um, Ho-Oh is by taking it to a hill and placing the um, feather on the stone and you'll have your chance to battle Ho-Oh to be able to capture it. Well, that would have been a hell of a nice thing to know. I know. (laughs) But... um, like I said, we'll get into the movies. I I, we, I feel like, and I mean, don't, I mean, this is only episode one, but I feel like we're going to be doing the movies kind of out of order. So they kind of follow the story of the Pokemon show that we're telling. Right. But, but um, we'll cross that path as we go along. Cause I feel like the movies are going to be a whole nother part of the podcast group that we're going to be going down. But yeah, yeah. the po- the Pokedex, as you said, it's alive and it's creepy. It's the iPhone before iPhone was even a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's basically uh, the episode because they get up. Uh, Ash picks Pikachu up in his arms. Pikachu kind of gives him a little lick and then, you know, kind of falls asleep. And Ash is just walking and, it, you know, to be continued. A yeah, rainbow. it's a good it's a good ending shot. Yeah, it is. Pikachu now trusts Ash and Pikachu never goes into its Pokeball. We never see that Pokeball again. And yeah, it's just you you they go into the city and that's your very first episode of Pokemon. And wow, did it take us longer to do the episode than I thought it was. But yeah, you say, oh, this a half hour. We might even be able to knock out two. I don't know about you, but I. Yeah, I don't think we're hitting two tonight, but this this was a good opener. It's I mean, I feel like episode two will be a lot um a little bit more simpler now that we've kind of given more of the background of the Pokemon. But, yeah, and we don't have to go we don't have to do like our history as well every episode. So that'll save a couple minutes. Yeah. Um something we didn't do that you were gonna do at the beginning of the episode, and maybe we'll remember for episode two. You were going to tell us who the who's that Pokemon was for episode one. Yes. So um, every single episode of Pokemon, they do a who's that Pokemon and they have it blacked out. And when they come back from commercial, they tell you who the Pokemon is and you either get it right or you get it wrong. Um, I, I get it right for the first 150. But after that, I'm <laughs> wrong every single time. But uh, <laughs> this episode was Pikachu and I think it was kind of apropos because Pikachu is the star of this episode and that just happens to be this Pokemon. And um, for at least for the first like 10 or 15 episodes, they kind of try to 
keep the who's that Pokemon to the Pokemon that you're watching in that episode. But later on, they become assholes and they're like, who's that Pokemon? This Pokemon's in a movie that you didn't see yet, but this is what that Pokemon is. Right. And I'm like, well, screw you. <laughs> but And I mean, we'll talk about it when we talk about episode two, but you're like, X was the Pokemon for for two. And I was like, well, at least he's in the episode. <laughs> yeah, he's in it. And he's introduced, but yeah, but that was Pokemon episode one, Pokemon I Choose You. Great, great, great opener, Doug. Yeah, I mean, it's a perfect way to get into the series. You met the principal, basically. I mean, you met Misty. Yep. Uh, Obviously, you don't know that she's going to be a factor. I mean, as far as you're concerned, after that first half hour, she's just a girl who happens to be fishing. Um you know, little do you know, you know, you come back tomorrow and she's going <clears> to, <throat> she's going to be, you know, a major factor going forward. But so, I mean, you met Oak, you met Gary, you met the mom. Yes. Um, I think that's about it that you met people wise. Let's see. Gary, Professor Oak, Ash, mom, Gary, let's see, Misty. Yeah, that's that's about it, because episode two, you start getting in, introduced to more of the um, Pokemon Center. You get introduced to the cop. Um, I'm not going to go over names right now, because um, that that that's the whole joy of episode two. I so, see what you did there, you cheeky fucker. You didn't even <laughs> I did that on purpose. I don't think you did. I think you fell into it and you tried to play it off like you did something smooth. <laughs> so... Yes, we will be back next week um, from you listening to this. If you're following this on a day to day, unless you're a a year behind and you're about to listen to this next. But um, episode two will be called Pokemon Emergency or the Japanese um, subtitle of it, Showdown Pokemon Center. So that is the next episode in the Pokemon series that we will be covering for you. But yeah, that kind of wraps up this this week's episode, Doug. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to have have this first one in um you know i think i think we'll find our footing as we go obviously we don't have to go into our history every episode um we'll be a little more prepared in terms of on this days yes Um, you know i i think two two facts i think is going to at least be our floor um I, I would say three at a max. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm kind of looking, talking Simpsons wise. They do three on this days. Holy crap! And I just noticed something right now. When they were airing these episodes, I mean, they're a week apart in Japan. <coughs> um, you have literally episode one, September eighth, two on the ninth, three on the tenth, uh, four on the eleventh, and then you have like a three day gap, and then it's the fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, ninth or 18th and then you have a two day gap. Wow. They really hammered away these Pokemon episodes. Okay. So there might not be a heavy presence of on this days. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. So I think that's basically going to be a Google. And if something pops out, we'll mention it. Uh, well, I'll, I'll make this. I, we'll try to do one per episode. Maybe. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, and we don't even have to, when we do it on this day, we, we don't even have to do it like to the year we can just do a general what happened on this date yeah yeah you're right i mean we just happened to luck out that we got a couple good ones for september 8th 1998 but yeah um obviously i don't know about you but i don't want to i don't want to cover 911 in a couple episodes um yeah so i'm going to pass on that one um <laughs> yeah but yeah i mean you know, we'll we'll fall into a couple things. Like we literally fell into the Mark McGuire and David Arquette thing. Um, we'll be a little more prepared. Um, we're gonna try to do. Well, you know what? I don't think we have to start with the Who's That Pokemon. I think we can do it when it's relevant. Like I have a specific uh, time point when I think it'll be relevant to bring up Who's That Pokemon in episode two. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can we 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 can do that. I mean. And if the Pokemon doesn't 
Um, I think when the Pokemon's introduced, we can do it. And then yeah. if the Pokemon's not in that episode, then we can go ahead and give the who's that Pokemon at the end of the episode. And we'll keep a tally of every time they were assholes and introduce you to one you ain't seen yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. But um, you ready to um, tie tie away this Pokemon episode, Doug? Yeah, I'm I'm very happy with what we put out. All right, everybody. Well, we hope you enjoyed episode one of every Pokemon episode ever podcast. And that's probably the third variant that you've heard this episode. <laughs> but yes, so we will be back next week. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss an episode of this. And we will try to advertise it as much as we can to get a lot of you into this podcast. Because I I'm, I'm, i don't know about you. I mean, I, I really, really enjoy doing wrestling on a weekly basis, Doug. But I honestly think like doing something different like this, that th- this will be like very fun. Like, I mean, not, not that doing the wrestling is not fun. It's just this is it's different. We, we've never gone down this path before. Well, and I'll, and I'll, maybe we'll we'll talk a little bit more about it on on this particular this week's episode of SEB. Um, yes. But this is a, just a weird time for wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I it's mean, a, a nice lockdown of COVID. But I mean, you know, yeah. WWE took a nice step this week, this Monday, um, yesterday. Well, I don't know when is this is this literally going out? Like, no. Day? No, we probably won't be. This episode probably won't go out for about a month. Once we get enough episodes in the can, we'll we'll start putting it out, and we advertise it enough. So. Oh, okay. So as you're hearing, as WWE just just the, our past Monday just did their first show with some trainees in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we but, recorded this uh, May 26 of 2020. So you probably won't be hearing this until a little bit mid June. <laughs> So, <laughs> but yeah, that's when this episode was, um, was released. Was recorded. Yeah. Or recorded. So. But yeah, yeah no, this, this was, was a good one. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they probably are going to get shorter as, as time goes on. I think I, I will call you out a little bit, Chris, and say you might have been a little optimistic with the whole half hour, 40 minute bit. Um, yeah. But I don't imagine they'll be this long every week. No, no, not at all. So once we figure out exactly what we're doing. (laughs) Exactly. But yeah, I want to thank everybody for listening to this very first episode. Um, I'm very excited to go down this journey, this never ending journey, because the (laughs) Pokemon is still going on to this day. So um We'll figure we'll figure this out. We'll figure it out with all of you, and maybe I will make a mailbox, and you can um, send in some suggestions for the podcast as well. So we're always open. Um, this is a very fan friendly podcast, so we hope to hear from you soon. So this will be fun. But um, I'm gonna th- toss it out because it's just a niche thing that we do now. So say goodbye, Doug. Goodbye, Doug. And this is Wrestling Chris G letting all of you know that Pokemon will be here forever. Have a good night, everybody.